my name is Jalen Avila, and in this five-minute Sono video, we are going to discuss how to perform an ultrasound-guided carpal tunnel release, aka the median nerve hydrodissection, using our ultrasound guidance. Our probe of choice here is naturally going to be the linear transducer. It is a high frequency transducer. And whenever we're doing anything with a needle, anything where we need the highest resolution image, we want to use our linear transducer. Now, as far as positioning, we want to make sure to uh, have our patient in a comfortable kind of orientation with the palm up, preferably they're in a bed and the arm is slightly ab ducted and maybe put some pillows or some towels underneath the wrist and maybe prop it up just a little bit about maybe right here. And we want to have the ultrasound screen itself basically feel the view. So oftentimes that's going to mean that the ultrasound machine is going to be on the other side of that patient. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. For our actual injection, we're gonna be using a 25 gauge, one and a half inch needle and a 10 milliliter syringe. And you're gonna inject around four to eight milliliters. Now, there are some case reports, some studies that show as little as four works just fine for that hydrodissection. And some need a little more up to eight milliliters. The injectate itself is going to be D5W, and you can also consider putting some local anesthetic in there as well. Next, I want to show you exactly how to perform that procedure. Special thanks to Dr. Gabriel Rose, who's the co-fellowship director at Kaiser Permanente in San Diego, and for the fellows that were there at the time, Dr. Tyler Yates, as well as Dr. Billy Shank, who were kind enough to walk us through how to do this procedure. Check it out. We are going to be looking for the median nerve. This is going to be just deep to the flexor retinaculum. We are going to use anisotropy to localize the nerve. We're going to fan the probe, and we see that the, uh, the nerve there in the center of the screen uh, is not changing its color relative to the tendons. We can also uh, follow it more proximally, and we see that it is not dissolving into the muscles like the tendons do. All right, so we're going to be doing this from the ulnar aspect. This is going to be an in-plane approach right at the end of the wrist. This is right at the carpal tunnel inlet. So we're going to go in with our needle, and then we're going to go just above our nerve, and we're going to inject about five cc's of normal saline solution. We're going to inject just above it. All right, now we're going to instill another five cc's just deep to the, to the nerve. Performing an ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release is maybe not something that we're always thinking about as we practice medicine, but it's something that I think will benefit a lot of patients as long as we are aware that it's a possibility. Doing this procedure is not necessarily any more difficult than a median nerve block done at the mid forearm, which we, many of us are comfortable with doing. It's just a little more distal. Remember, needle guidance is of utmost importance. If you can't see the needle tip, do not advance that needle and make sure that you're following your local institutional guidelines with regards to how to perform these blocks. Hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.